guys, welcome back to my channel. I passed by Nespresso pop-up store in Greenbelt 5 last weekend and I got intrigued by this shirt they were wearing and I asked if I can purchase it. So the guy said, since you're dropping off your pods, you might as well take a photo of yourself dropping off the, the pods, use the hashtag I choose Nespresso I recycle, post it publicly on Instagram and we will quickly give you a chance to win the shirt. So I said, okay, no biggie, because I'm, you know, I'm all for it. I'm all for recycling. And soon after, I received a message from the marketing team of Nespresso asking me for my details. And then they invited me over for a trip to a, a farm, a local farm. They've partnered with a local farm to discuss how they do their recycling process. I wouldn't pass off a chance to find out how they do their recycling because all the while I thought that they were transporting these used pods somewhere else outside the Philippines. It's a two-hour trip. It's not super far south like it's just uh, in Santa Rosa, Laguna. We left at 7.30 in Glorieta 4 in Makati and then there was no traffic going there. We arrived at about before 9. We were greeted with like a really nice place. It looks like a barn. We were a small group. We were just, I guess, maybe about 10, 10 or 15. We were greeted with some warm breads. And of course, there were different Nespresso machines. And they served us with my favorite, Levanto. They also had Ristretto there. And then they had a Columbia. First thing that greeted us was, do you guys want to have coffee? Of course! We also had a smelling session of the coffee. And the one thing that I was super surprised to find out was that the intensity of the coffee is actually not something to be scared about. I thought that there would be so much caffeine depending on the intensity. But no, it's actually the same. And the only thing that would have a, a very high caffeine content would be their Kazar, which is at intensity 12. But the rest would have pretty much the same, of course, except for the decaf. And it's only about how bitter or how strong the flavor will be. But none of the issues about you having way too much caffeine in just one cup. So that's not a thing. Okay, so we had a, a goodie bag, a nice eco bag, which also has the hashtag at the back. And they gave us this green vitality shot from Holy Carabao. It's actually made of, of greens, mainly superfood like malunggay and all the the green stuff that they grow in their own in their own farm. And then they also gave us this very nice keychain which is actually some recycled pods and I can tell you the flavors are arpeggio and cosi if I'm not mistaken. Tell me. Tell me Nespresso. This is arpeggio and cosi right? So, I've <laughs> been having way too much Nespresso. And then, of course, uh, the shirt that comes with the, the goodie bag. And then they also gave us this. Oh, this is the, this is the notepad. And then the masterclass, which explains a lot of good things about how to make the basic coffee recipes and uh, yeah, some some of the informative like sh short description of each of the coffee and then some terms, some glossary of terms. I was able to to try out the other machines and boy, the other machines were really powerful. Like you can really tell how it's very strong and uh, no, like a uh, solid. Yeah, maybe that's the description very solid. This machine in particular is like super built in like it can probably do like 20 cups in one go <laughs> so you just have to press and press. Well the good thing about Nespresso is that you don't worry about you don't worry about the quality of the coffee each time and this was discussed during the, the session. It depends on the scale of the barista and how good your coffee will be but that's not the case with Nespresso because all you have to do, whether you're having a bad day or having a really gloomy weather, 
All you have to do is just press the button. What started out as a desire to just get a shirt landed me a trip to Holy Carabao Farm, which is the sustainable farm that Nespresso Philippines partnered with. And I'm all for that because I really like it when international companies are engaging local agricultural companies. And Holy Carabao Farm is founded by Hindi Weber Tantoko and she's, I've been a fan because she's been into marketing and fashion and and I've known her in her corporate years. I would read her in magazines and her interviews. And actually just about a couple or three weeks ago, I watched her on TV and found out that she actually owned Car Holy Carabao. And Melanie was the one who discussed the history of the place. They just started because of the desire to provide really good food for the family and then eventually they would have extra produce and that they would share it and then they decided to have like a door-to-door -door delivery and then it expanded and I mean that's good because now we are able to have it delivered by I, I think maybe Grab or Lala Move. I just had my order yesterday so I'm gonna have it sometime around Tuesday or Thursday that's what they said. It's very important that you know who your farmers are and how they deal with their produce and how they not just maximize but how they continue on making sure that the soil gives you the right produce every time that I didn't know that when you start planting just one type of, of vegetable whatever that it needs it sucks it from the soil and the soil eventually becomes I don't know malnourished if you don't do like cycling like with different plants or different vegetables on it it will be useless and if you also don't give back something to it so that it becomes nourished again it will be useless in the end so what they did is that they do composting and I didn't know that when you throw things that are biodegradable I didn't know that there is a proper way to do it so that it doesn't produce a lot of bad gas or uh, it doesn't it gets processed properly so that it doesn't contribute to climate change I didn't know about that so I just thought yeah I'm gonna just throw my biodegradables in one section and then they would they do it what the discussion centered on is that the way that we process these biodegradable stuff is that we just you know bury them in the landfills and these things create so much gas that adds up to how how hard it is for us now to deal with climate change so with them what they do is like they process it properly there is a certain curing time where the compost can now in small portions be brought back to the soil that will be used to to grow the plants and the vegetables that they have the edible flowers and then it can revive itself. The the Nespresso team also discussed about how they do the recycling and what they've been doing with it. They've been doing a lot of like Christmas ornaments. They've been doing Swiss knives with with Swiss Army. So there are many ways to return your used pods to Nespresso. One is to go to the pop-up stores and to also have it picked up from you if you do online orders. And I've done both. They're they're pretty good. They did they, they do it. I didn't even know that I was charged extra for the online delivery when I asked for them to pick up my used pods because I really didn't mind. They said that they charge about eighty pesos, which is actually a subsidized delivery fee. So it's actually just one shipping fee again. So maybe maybe it's about one hundred sixty, and they subsidize half. I don't know, but they charge us 80 pesos when we do online delivery with pickup of the pods which I absolutely don't mind because that's my contribution to the environment on how we can minimize these wastes and I've always researched about how I will not contribute to more waste when I before I purchased Nespresso I quickly decided on okay so what do they do with the pods and I found out that they actually get it from you you can bring it to them and I save them I actually put them in their black bag the, the recycle bag I store it in the fridge so that they don't grow mold and I wouldn't be so pissed about you know going back and forth and having so many trips 
having so many trips to Nespresso would actually bring me concerns about carbon emissions and carbon footprint. Just found out from Nespresso that only 20% of the market here in the Philippines is doing that, so we have to encourage a lot of people to, to bring in the pods. 20% is already a lot. Actually, I'm very proud of Nespresso for having achieved 20%. However, we can of course do more. We as the, the consumers should bring that number up because that's not just a drive that Nespresso is willing to, to back on. It is also our personal contribution that would matter. I would personally be posting so many things about how Nespresso is recycling because even my friends kept on telling me that I've been really wasteful about this because no, no, that's not the case. They're actually encouraging us to return the pods and they've been very helpful and very supportive about this and hence I've attended this kind of session. So next we were given a chance to to know the the history of of coffee and then what makes a really good coffee. They made us see also the soil and how they revive it and they made us touch the soil Okay, I didn't touch the soil because there were, there was also a version of the soil with the worms and well, I was filming so I had an excuse. For, uh, this is uh, something that I don't really push myself in. <laughs> I will just, you know, I'm, I'm all for all the, the, the other things but, but except for that. But it was, it was, I mean, some of the people who were there, they were, they were touching the soil and even the compost and they can feel how it was the temperature was different was warmer if you can just imagine how if the compost is not treated well that warmth really can snowball into something like gas effect and um, yeah really bad for the environment for the climate then we had a planting session with them they said that they don't till the land so much because it's, it's actually bad for the soil. They just loosen it up and then they just pile it up. Pile it up with the right nu nutrients from the compost and then uh, change it once in a while, cycle it with a different plant once in a while. And then we also got to feed the rabbits and the rabbits were like, they were big and healthy. Like they were big but they don't look fat. I had really f uh, a fun time with the pigs, the black pigs, like, I mean, I've always known that pigs are, are very intelligent creatures and they're like dogs because I used to, I used to have pigs before when I was younger and then the, at a certain time when we already had phones and I was still growing pigs, I, I would take selfies with them and they would look at the camera. <laughs> They're they're really intelligent like that. They even wag their tails. But I love bacon. So anyway, there was also a dog there. I wasn't able to. I don't know if I was able to film the dog, but the was, dog was also very friendly and very very healthy and uh, not afraid of, of strangers at all. It was a, a really nice a really nice experience because the farm was also made in such a way that it looked like a real like like how my grandmother's place looked like when I was young and it was like a combination of different plants all over there wasn't any okay this is an arrangement of lettuce okay this is an arrangement of sprouts it doesn't look like that it looks like a bunch of many other things and what I believed in when I was younger that when you have like dried leaves that you keep them on the soil because it brings back the nutrients back to the soil they believed in it too so for lunch I think I had the most in my plate I tried everything I had because you can really tell how healthy the food is and how you know vibrant the greens were the edible flowers were, were something I was also surprised that they grow on their farm and it was it was Hindi who herself served us the food, which was very sweet because I, I think that she's really not feeling well. She lost her voice, but she would really show up and like, um, she even whispered to me that, oh, hey, I even forgot to, I wasn't even able to to serve you because you know she was busy with the rest, and I was like, oh, that's no problem because I was busy looking at the food, 
it was so good the dressings and I bought a lot of dressings online so I bought the dressings because they were so good their pork um, their porchetta oh amazing it was so good and and Milet served me the porchetta and she was like do you want because um, I said I need a f I need my fats and she said yeah I was actually deciding what part I will give you because I want to give you the fat part and I was like yeah I need my fats and she said do you also want the skin and I said yes of course <laughs> and so the skin was very crunchy it was very good and I think it's also because the pigs are eating very good vegetables sustainable clean no pesticides no chemicals that they all stay so good and I was like you know this is the reason why we should really look into where we get our food because if they if the food that we eat also eat good food that it nourishes us the right way and it also brings us a lot of good feeling in the palate that to begin with is you know I'm super on board with it oh yeah by the way they also mentioned about growing the vegetables in the air like there were people who would hang the vegetables and then they would just spray water in it or they can just I don't know uh, like an auto supply of water and they said that they don't support that because holy caramel doesn't support that because they feel like it's vegetables and dextrose they the vegetables are meant to grow on land on soil and get the proper nutrients from from the soil and if they grow somewhere else then they are essentially just fake they're growing but they're getting nutrients from water and that's pretty much it and while it will give you fiber it probably will not give you the right nutrients their ice cream is to die for I had the dulce de leche they also had like chocolate and calamansi flavors and luckily though we weren't able to shop I was I had cash with me because I thought yeah I'm gonna shop for for greens and dairy but I think I think the farm is not meant for shopping like the farm is meant for for training people for informing people about what they do but they they mainly have their operations already intact with the deliveries the zone deliveries and their shop in Poblacion in Makati so so unluckily we don't have um, and we also didn't have time because when we when I was deciding to shop because they had like a few greens over there um, not very pricey so it was it was really nice when when we decided to to choose the Nespresso team said we will be leaving in five minutes because there was so much traffic and yeah there was so much traffic going back to to Makati so we, we never had time so that's the reason why I just ordered online and it was it was fun so overall because i don't want this to be 100 years long i really enjoyed it and i really hope that nespresso team would continue on doing this for 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 however long it takes and i myself would consciously be informing a lot of my friends and whatever reach i can with the social media that i have most of all i'd like to thank nespresso philippines for inviting me to this uh, experience I really loved it I'm all for these kind of things and I am also delighted to learn that you are partnering with a local farm you can really get ahead when you're doing well in contributing back to the community and it's not just about selling coffee to you it's about making sure that everything is sustainable that it comes along like we order, we return to you the pods, you make something out of it, you not only make something out of it, you also contribute forwards and pay it forwards by by contributing to how I can get my vegetables. <laughs> so it's it's really it's really a nice endeavor and 
I really, I really hope that Nespresso keeps on doing this and that I get to help you guys as well in reaching out to as many people as I can through this platform. So thanks a lot for watching. I really enjoyed this experience. I hope that you guys get to check out the hashtag of Nespresso, which I will link down here. And I hope that you guys also keep on posting your Nespresso experience. I've been posting mine like almost every day. I would post my my Nespresso flavor that I'm having for the day, and I really I really enjoy every cup, and I really I really smell them, and I really try to like linger on the flavor for of every sip. And if you're also into like purchasing it's almost Christmas now they have ornaments that they used the Nes Nes recycled Nespresso pods with they are available in the pop-up shops and in the boutiques they're very nice they're very pretty and they would I'm very sure they would last long they're very nice like Christmas balls for your, your Christmas decors so there you have it thanks a lot for watching and for staying up until the very end see you again soon bye